wow, it's been a really, really long time since I've put anything on this playlist in particular, let alone anything on this channel, especially ones where I'm showing my face, but that's a separate conversation altogether. And so I guess this is a shift for what this playlist on this channel was originally going to be. The videos, if you're combing through this list, are me playing golf in college. And I'm sure there are a handful of you, well, a very small handful, myself included, that's wondering, hey, where did those college golf videos go? And to me, I have to say, I don't know where they went either because there aren't any anymore. I have since graduated college and have spent a year in grad school. But that's beside the point. The fact of the matter is actually the inconsistencies at the beginning of this series where I chronicled my college golf career is a fairly accurate representation of what my career was actually like. And while it was a, a wash with, you know, I guess the right word to use would be missed potential and missed opportunity, I still wouldn't trade it for the world. I've made, you know, some lifelong friends through that team through the four years that I spent in that program. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. The memories were great. And, you know, I got a couple of golf bags and a handful of Pro V1s out of the deal. But that's not what this section of the channel, that's not what this playlist is going to be anymore because I, like the times, have changed a little bit over the last year or so. Now, the things that I remember from my college golf career are going to stick with me forever. The late night bus rides, the, I mean, this even, I, honestly, we could even send it back to my high school career as well. But the eight year window where I played competitive golf, it was a great time. The high school bus rides, the college bus rides, getting to make really good friends. And of course, being the victim of the single greatest fantasy football last place punishment, which is having to do a good 10 minute stand up set. And I killed that night. I, I literally killed that night. But the, the fact of the matter is I'm, I'm not there anymore. I've moved on to bigger and brighter things. And it's time to, att to attach myself to a new competitive sport, a new place to get my competitive anchor out. I know it would be a shock to believe, but a kid growing up in Texas like I did, uh, my first sport that I really took a lot of time in was hockey. I played it from, I started playing inline hockey in fifth grade and it was really good and I made the switch to ice, I believe it was in sixth grade. And then I spent two or three seasons in net. And the only reason that I stopped playing hockey in the first place because I absolutely loved playing hockey was the fact that I started high school and I had to make a choice. Did I want to be on the hockey team, which Hockey in South Central Texas isn't exactly a booming thing, and there was no high school teams for me to play on, so I would have had to make this really tough choice to suddenly grow a foot, because at the time I was like 5'4 when I was going into my freshman year. Uh, and so basically I never saw hockey as an opportunity, and with the marching band schedule being what it is when I was in high school, which was practice every single day and competitions every Saturday in the month of October, Playing hockey in high school became impractical and thus, oddly enough, in a roundabout way, created the college career and the high school golf career that I had in, and enjoyed for the previous eight to nine years. But now that I'm in Minnesota, which is basically hockey mecca, it's only fair that I give the sport an opportunity that I never gave it when I was younger. And as much as it sounds crazy to say... I put it down for 10 years and I think it's time to pick it back up. And it does kind of go without saying, the move back to Minnesota did kind of reignite my love for the sport of hockey, which is saying something given that I, of my own accord, created a hockey commentary channel, watched my favorite team win the Stanley Cup, and then started a hockey podcast. More on that down in the description if you haven't seen it already. It's, it's a time, it's a time, but it's, you can only talk about hockey so much without wanting to play it so bad. And I reached that critical breaking point about three months ago when I made the decision to say, screw it, I'm gonna get the skates back on and I'm going to live out the dream that 13 year old Ian wasn't able to because he had to start high school. And so what's crazy is the fact that obviously I wanna come back and play hockey. I've, I was never a very good skater, but I was always a pretty good goalie despite being one of the shorter kids here. Even when my rec league team back when I was like 14 won the house league tournament, I wasn't exactly the biggest kid in the world. I had these bright white, black and orange coho revolution pads. I loved them to death. I was like my own little version of Jonas Hiller and it was, it was awesome. But you know, you'd be amazed how much things can change, especially within a sport over the course of almost a decade. And so when I went to start trying on goalie stuff for the first time back in like March, April, May of this year, 
it was like stepping into a whole new universe of what goal equipment was supposed to look like. And it took me quite a long time to wrap my head around the concept of, okay, Ian, you're doing this again now. Let's see what you can actually get and what you actually are supposed to be. Because the last time you put on skates, you were like 5'4". And now you are very much not 5'4". So I spent a good deal of time over the spring and summer up here trying to find equipment that I actually, one, wanted to wear, and two, could reasonably afford to wear because, wow, goalie gear is expensive once you get out of the intermediate ranges, but that's not the conversation. And this whole adventure wouldn't have even been possible if I hadn't uh, been <laughs> appraised on, hey, go look at Sideline Swap. 90% of my gear came off of that site. I can't recommend it enough, but this isn't a paid promotion. How they probably don't even know who I am, but that's beside the point. The fact is I got all my gear and it's finally all in one place. I've put it on, I've gone to about five total hours of ice time already, and I swear it's like a kid in a candy store again. I haven't gotten this excited since I got my irons fit when I was like a senior in college. So that was like, it's, it's that kind of feeling. And that's saying something given that I've only known that feeling with golf clubs for the last decade. So being like, ooh, this goalie glove feels nice was a very strange feeling given that I only ever owned one when I played uh, in goal for three or four years when I was a little kid. But yeah, those five hours of ice time so far came in like local stick and pucks here in the Twin Cities. But, you know, that's only so much. And I just so happened to find myself a group to play in. And I get to play in my first game situation uh, on Tuesday, also known as my second day of class of my second year of law school. So needless to say, I'm going to be very alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic when I hit the ice in about four days for my first game, uh, or my first game since I was like in eighth grade. So that's gonna be fun, but I think it's time to see what I actually came to purchase that will, you know, prevent me from dying via blunt force trauma of a hockey puck. I think it's only fair we start with arguably the most important piece of equipment is the thing protecting my brain, the thing that I've used to get to the position that I'm in and I didn't really want to spare expense. This is one of the few things that I didn't buy secondhand because on top of the fact that helmets expire, because that's something I only kind of knew when I was a little kid, but now I'm very appraised on helmets do very much expire. Finding a good secondhand helmet that isn't coming up on its expiration date is kind of hard. So I got lucky and I found um, a sale uh, when Bauer was about to come out with their new stuff and I picked up a the 930 Bauer helmet it's treated me pretty well. It's very comfortable. I had an NME3 back in the day. It was this matte white, orange, and black helmet. I loved it to death. It never really gave me any issues. And I, and even though this is Bauer's entry-level helmet, it's still a very solid piece of equipment. And I've taken a few pucks to the head already. The mask cleaned up perfectly well. Um, and I'm, I'm, you only get rattled the same amount. I'm not sure. I'm sure a $500 helmet would have saved my brain a little more and a $1,000 helmet would have done so even more. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm 23 years old. I'm not going to play in the NHL anytime soon, if ever. I'm not going to play anything really organized for a while. And so I don't really need to break the bank on a brand, like on a super high-end helmet. So this one has actually treated me perfectly well and I don't see any reason why I'll be switching out of it anytime soon. Mostly because it has until, let me check this, 2029 until it expires. So I've got about five more years of enjoying this helmet. Now moving down from the helmet, cause obviously the helmet is what you can see. Let's stick about to some of the other things that you can also see and move to my personal favorite area of the equipment, the hands. Now I played baseball growing up as well. So I have had all various kinds of gloves. I've literally got three different types of baseball gloves sitting in my apartment right now. So finding a glove that I actually enjoyed trying on that I was able to close cause I've got very abnormally large hands. Uh, finding gloves that worked for me was a bit of a challenge. Warrior, I know they've got the extra large palms, uh, which I was tempted to find, but there are, there's, remember a lot of this stuff came off of the secondhand market. So I had to find something that towed the line between, you know, good, but also not crusty because wow, weather gets really crusty whenever you put some sweat and some moisture into it. And so finding a, finding a set of equipment that wasn't completely demolished through was a bit of a challenge. And I got incredibly lucky and, and this is just the way it is sometimes on sites like this. I found a set that was basically brand new. And by basically brand new, I mean it was brand new. 
uh, at a massive, massive markdown, which was really, really great. I wound up going with the CCM EFLEX 6.9 glove and blocker. And to preview something that happens in minutes, same thing with the leg pads. I got a full matching set. Now, white and blue wasn't exactly my first choice for pads. I wanted to go black on black because I wanted to go like stealth mode look. But, you know, when you're trying to do this on a budget, you can't really haggle over colors and white and blue isn't exactly terrible. It's, it's Toronto colored. So, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. Like it's, it's totally fine. Um, and I'm actually really enjoying them. The glove broken, super easy. The blockers hanging on really well. It's, it's, I, I know on, I've read online, it doesn't have the most pop in the world, but my experience pucks just explode off my blocker. I'm having a really easy time tracking the puck into the webbing. Uh, on the glove, which is interesting. It's the first time I've ever used a double T. I always had a single T on the Coho glove that I used to have as a kid. And so it was a bit of an adjustment. Also single T on all my baseball gloves. So being able to see a strip down the middle of the glove right here is a little bit of an adjustment for me. But uh, so far I've actually really, really enjoyed these gloves and I've yet to get any stingers in the palm of the glove and the blocker has been great. And so I really have nothing to complain about with the glove or blocker setup. Now to protect my center mass, obviously I had to pick up a good chest protector. And with my initial research, it was very obvious that the best press, the best chest protectors in the game are the occasional Vaughn chest protector, if you can find them nowadays, uh, Brian's, even though they're really expensive, and CCM. Like CCM is far and away some of the better ones. And so I wound up going with an Axis chest protector. It's a few years older, uh, but it was in really good condition when I got it. and. It's treated me really, really well with one very notable exception. And this is not down to the build quality of the CCM chest protector at all. It is down to my inability to remember how to goalie properly. Now, the only time I've ever had a stinger, because I've had pucks hit me all over my torso when I've been wearing this thing, even up on the, even up by the collarbones, down by the waist. I, I've done a really good job, and this chest protector's done a really good job of keeping my core very safe. The only time it got me in trouble is when I didn't lean into the post the right way, and it took a puck off the back of the arm there. Not the chest protector's fault. I tried to make a save with my back, and there's not exactly a whole lot of padding there, so I don't know what I expected. But it's, it's treated me really well, and I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever. And it helps when I pair the chest protector with one of these Bauer Pro neck guards. It helps with this area, but also I got it because I'd rather not get my head cut off. So having this nice Kevlar neck wrap is, you know, it, it just kind of makes sense, especially with everything that's happened in the last year with people getting their necks cut and the famous incident of goalies almost getting their heads chopped off by skates. So better safe than sorry, especially because I like the sound of my own voice. I keep the theme of CCM outerwear going. I picked up CCM 1.9 pants. They're great. They fit me really well. The internal belt is awesome because I never had that as a kid. I, I even played, I think I played my first two seasons in net wearing skater pants because I made the conversion over from skater and I had just bought new CCM pants for that too. So being able to basically slide across, it's done a really good job of um, keeping my lower half safe and keeping, it's very padded, it's very comfortable. Pair those pants with some Bauer Pro knee pads. This is the first time I've used knee pads because the old leg pads I used to have as a kid had integrated knee pads. So it's been a little bit of adjustment phase, but you know, I put the skates down for 10 years. Of course, technology is going to change. And the, the age of the integrated sewn in knee pad, I think ended about five years ago. So I don't know why I expected that to work, uh, but I've made the adjustment and it's been, it's been very, very nice. I'll leave it at that. It's been very nice. Leg pads, as I alluded to earlier, I went with the same set, the EFLEX 6.9 in blue and white. They're very, very nice. I think they're some of the best leg pads I'd ever tried on, and I tried on some pretty good stuff uh, when I was trying to get fit in the first place. I've really enjoyed the, the end of the leather buckle straps that I used to have on my old pads. I very much am liking the Velcro. It makes getting the pads on a lot easier. It also makes them rotate a lot faster. I also am finding with the advancements of like the speed skin tech, the I'm sliding across the crease so much better than I ever could as a kid. Maybe it's because there's eight more inches of me to push around, uh, but I'm feeling like I can cover so much more of the crease with so much less effort when I'm down in the butterfly that it's actually making me almost change the way that I thought I knew how to play goalie, which is a good thing because I'd hope I'd have to change the way I played when you know I put them down for 
10 years, basically. I mean, I was in eighth grade the last time I did this, and now I'm in like 18th grade. So of course things are gonna be different. I don't know what I expected, but the, the leg pads have been treating me super, super well, and I'm not expecting to be changing them out anytime soon, seeing as I just got them and they were basically brand new. And the last piece of equipment worth note is probably the single greatest deal I got in this entire process was a pair of Bauer, I think it's their like S170 skates. They were a little used, they were very used, and they took me a very long time to figure out how to wear. Uh, because I originally, they needed new laces and I got the laces that were too long because this was the first time I'd bought new laces in forever. And then I couldn't get the ankles tight enough and then I got them too tight and then I got a cramp in the middle of my foot and it was, it was a whole ordeal, but I have since finally got them dialed in and they have treated me pretty well the last one and a half hours that I've been on the ice. Hopefully I remember how to keep them set up right because it took, I swear, like hours to hours and hundreds of lace tightness combinations to try and get these locked in, but I think they're finally locked in. And obviously, you know, I can't be normal. I can't hide my fandom. Got the custom skate guards on there. What can I say? I'm a fanatic. So at the end of the day, this has been all fun and games. And as you can see, there's some puck marks that's from the first couple hours. The next time I put a video here, it will probably be middle of next week when I have some film to look over. I haven't seen myself play I haven't taken any pictures, any videos of myself in gear yet at all. And so we're going to see together just how terrible I am in goal after a 10-year break when I get put in game situations. I have a feeling there's going to be a little bit of good and quite a lot of bad. So stick around to figure that out as well as stick around because we've got more podcast episodes coming out and, of course, more Golden Knights game recaps whenever the season restarts. So that being said, welcome to my new uh, day in the life, day in the life of a new goalie. So yeah, thank you guys for lending me your attention. Hopefully some of this equipment mumbo jumbo uh, actually entertains some of you guys. I had to become a massive goalie gear nerd after understanding golf nerd stuff for eight years. So it was like learning a whole new language, but what can I say? I'm a glut for new information. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of these videos. Tell all your friends. Comment down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.